Jesus at the center of it all. Wow, I see lots of lovely people here. All across the room. A very good morning to the sons and daughters of the Most High. Amen. Even if you don't feel it, even if you feel down, even if you feel bewildered about what's happening, you are a son and a daughter of His Majesty. Amen. And the King is our Father. Father, I just thank you for the word that you will speak to us today, that this word will be a word of life, that will minister, that will, will, will challenge our thoughts, that will cut through all the discouragement and the gloom that we see on this earth. I thank you, Father, that this word will be a word of truth. It will be a word about Jesus. And it will set us free, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, sorry, can we have the uh, TV here on? It's, it's currently not on. Thank you. Okay, so today uh, we've, we've actually been doing a series on uh, Let Us. How many of you remember the series that we've been doing? Nobody. Okay. <laughs> it's been some time since we, we had uh, the, the last message on, on Let Us. So basically it's talking about uh, how do we live out our lives in the new covenant and it is taken from, we are, we are looking at the book of Hebrews, alright? So we are now at Hebrews 12 and the, the title is actually, Let Us Serve God in Grace or rather, Let Us Have Grace by Which We May Serve God. We'll look at the, the title shortly, I mean the, the verse shortly. But I entitled it, In His Majesty's Service, if you all know what that means, okay? This is, uh, yeah, James Bond has one movie like this. And um, so this is the passage. I decided to add one more verse at the end, but later we'll look at a few more, many more verses, all right? Therefore, since we, have, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. What do you... What is the first impression you get when you read this passage? This passage always, uh, yeah, you don't serve God, uh, you're going to be consumed, you know. Chasio, you know. Uh, siu yok, you know. God is going to burn you up in a great ball of fire. If you don't serve God properly, huh, everybody better serve God. Uh, uh. In the past, we always like that, right? Hey, how come you're not serving? Hey, you must get into a, a, a ministry to serve, you know? If the cajoling and uh, coercing doesn't work, then you say, hey, if you don't serve, uh, God will burn you up, you get punished, you know? Oh, then that one is threat already. Lah. Okay? So in the past, we have looked at it that way. So I was asking God, you know, I said, this verse is very interesting. What is it about? But before I go into this, I want to address something that all of us have, the whole world has gone through, okay, and particularly close to home. And you know, since last Friday, I mean, not this past Friday, the, the last Friday, since March actually, when, when, the, when the MH370 went missing and all that, you know, we, we've seen so many things that are happening in the world right now. I don't know, I mean, a barometer of how people feel is the posts you see on Facebook, right? Those of you who are on Facebook, you can see the comments that people make and all that. So that kind of shapes or we, we roughly know what people are feeling. And because of the plane crashes and, you know, this, this past week, there's, I think there have been uh, three plane crashes, all right? And, and people are like, what? How can it be? You know, this is impossible. And then you get the Israel-Palestine conflict which is flaring up again, which has flared up again. And you know, up to now, I think we have about a thousand Palestinians killed and about maybe 40 to 50 Israelis killed. And then you get people all over the world chipping in and saying all sorts of things and you're wondering, you know, what's happening? Why, why are, you know, it seems to be an unsolvable problem. 
And then you get Ukraine versus Russia, and this is the cause of MH17. Uh, 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 you know, all those who perished on MH17. Then you get civil war in Iraq and Syria and Libya, people dying and bombs going off. And recently, I mean, this just yesterday, a bomb going off in Thailand. You know, you get typhoons. My, 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 um, my own helper's family, you know, the, the kampong was, the, the houses were flattened, you know. My own helper who, who's from Philippines. So it's very close to home. You know, we are feeling it. And so I was thinking, you know, I said, Father, I'm preparing about this sermon about serving you. And all these shik- all this, all this things are going on, you know, what's happening? How do I stand up on stage and tell people about serving God when, when, you know, all these things are happening and people have to deal with this in the first place? And then the Holy Spirit told me, deal with it. I want to deal with this situation. All of us right now, we are feeling, what's happening? Then you get a haze, right? Then you get people getting dengue, right? Two of my staff, okay? I got seven staff in my, in my company, Two of them got dengue. So you're, ah, yo, what's going on? And so the first passage that came to my mind, I mean, not, I, I hadn't yet looked at the, the, the Hebrews 12, 28. So in the car on the way to work, I was just looking at, I said, there's a shaking going on. I think there's a shaking going on. This was the word that came to my mind. And then I remember that, that verse that says, you know, and God will shake the heavens and not, uh, the, the earth, and not just the earth, but the heavens. And I went to look up that passage, and it is Hebrews 12, verse 26 and 27. And then I'm speaking on verse 28. And that was a confirmation that God is saying something. All right? So I want you all to turn now to Hebrews 12. We need to look at the context in which this uh, passage Okay, sorry, let's, let's, the question that we would ask, all right, is where is God? You know, I get people saying, yeah, lah, God is love, you know, then why He allow all these things to happen, right? That's the first reaction people have. You know, all those poor people on the plane who didn't know anything, they were, they were just sitting down watching a movie and then suddenly they perish, you know. And then we don't even know whether they, 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 they died straight away or whether, you know, it was, you know, it's a horrifying feeling, lah, you know, that we get. Where is God? How can you say a God of love is here, you know, that kind of thing. Now, these are questions that people have. And this is a very pertinent question. In the past, people always have the question about where is God? Alright? Now that we are in the new covenant, we are sitting here in this church. Alright? Most of us would know what we speak about grace and about the new covenant, about how much God loves us. Is there a difference in our mind when we are faced with this kind of shaking in the world. What goes through your mind? What is your mindset towards it? And for the answer, we need to look at Hebrews 12. So I want you all to turn to Hebrews 12. And I'm going to go through the whole chapter, okay? But don't worry. I'm going to paraphrase it. So those of you who have your iPads or your Bibles, please turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Those who don't have their mind, just listen to me, okay? I'm going to paraphrase it because I found it incredibly accurate and I found it a good context for us to understand this shaking and this serving God. So I will read out, I will preach to you from Hebrews 12, right? You'll just listen. So Paul speaks of the difference between the flesh and the spirit man and of the struggle that is inside us in Hebrews 12, right? For this incredible life journey that we are called to, let us strip off anything that will stop us or distract us. Let us run the appointed course of our lives with patience, endurance, and steady persistence in faith, uh, in grace, looking only to Jesus, who himself finished his course, and he is the one that completes our faith. Thinking of Him and what He went through will help and strengthen us in our minds so that we do not lose heart nor faint in what we believe in. Along the way, our Father will guide, train and correct us for our benefit. He does so to bring out the fruits of the renewed life of Christ in us. 
Now that you know this, stand up straight. Quit whining and succumbing to lethargy. Live in peace and pursue the set apart, the different life that you are called to. Not a life of self-works, but one of letting Him work through us. If we live in the system of the world, with the efforts of the flesh, we will not see Him revealed in our lives because He operates in the holy, set-apart spirit man. That is who we really are. Verse 15. Look out and care for one another in case anyone falls back from becoming a partaker of grace and goes back to the flesh, becoming angry and bitter at the things that happen in this world and hence influence others of the body to revert to the flesh. Do not give up your birthright as sons of God so easily like Esau, whose focus was only on his fleshly needs. The Bible here calls him fornicate, uh, uh, fornicator or profane. Okay? So I was wondering, why is Esau a fornicator? But then the Holy Spirit said to me, He says, what does fornication mean in the spirit? It means to be intimate in the mind with just about any thought that comes your way. So any thought that comes your way, you accept it, yeah, you know. Not only the thought that is of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? So a word that is discouraging, a word that is not true, that comes in, whether through Facebook or whether whatever, in your mind, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, maybe it's like that. That is, in a sense, spiritual fornication, okay? I mean, it's just what, what the Paul is talking about here. And profane, profane means common or unhallowed. That's the, the exact translation. To make ordinary the extraordinary life that God has given to us. So Paul is talking about this. Verse 18 to 24, Because we are no longer on Mount Sinai, but on Mount Zion, not of terror and fear and dread, but we are coming to Jesus, a person, and of His blood that cries out, forgiveness, justification, freedom for us. Verse 25, Take heed to this message. If you do not listen, there will be no escape from the shaking that comes. What does escape the shaking mean? The shaking, the torment in your mind, anguish, lack of peace. Maybe you give up on your faith because of this shaking. I want to clarify here. If you read verse 25, it says that if you hear not the voice that was on the earth, okay, you will not hear the voice that is from heaven. Those, that, those who did not heed the voice that is on earth would, would not escape. And so much, and even more so, those who did not hear the voice from heaven will not escape. So the question is, escape what? Escape the wrath of God. Ah. So that's why when, when you look at this verse, you have to look in context, because the next verse is talking about shaking. And so Paul is not talking about escape of the wrath of God, because it never talks about that. Our mind straight away jumps to that conclusion, but it's not. God, Paul is talking about the shaking the escape from the shaking that is happening in this world. You, you all understand what I'm saying? If we j allow just about any thoughts to, to come into our mind, oh yeah, how about this, maybe this, maybe this, you know, yeah, God doesn't, don't know whether God loves, why, why, why in New Covenant also no difference one? How come like that, you know, we are, we are, we are tossing left and right. We are, we are making the extraordinary life that God has given to us ordinary and that is profanity in the spirit. Alright, that is, that is the exact translation. So, is it take heed to this message, alright, so that you will be able to escape. You will be able to escape the shaking. And the shaking is the shaking of the mind. Okay? Because in verse 26, it says, there will be shaking on this earth and in heaven. The word shake is S-E-I-O, seyo, not seilo. Not say huh? it's sayo, okay? Sayo is agitation, agitation particularly of the mind. The Greek is very clear, okay? Agitation of the mind, why? These things are happening overseas, we feel it because it is in our mind. If it's happening there, it could happen here. It could happen to me, right? Then you get worried, you get fearful, okay? There will be things that will happen that will shake men's belief and faith. Anything that is not founded on Jesus will be removed. Systems created by men, political systems, economic systems, and these things are happening now. 
Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God. And that is the context. So the summary of Hebrews 12, 1 to 27, what I've said just now. We are on an exciting journey. All right? It is like the amazing race. You remember last time on Astro or whatever? The amazing race. Uh, a lot of things can happen. This is a journey that we are on. And many times we can be discouraged. So look to, but we need, so the Bible says, look to Jesus. When you see him and what he has done, that is the only antidote to your fear and the shaking. We need to be strengthened in our mind about what God has done, who He is to us in the midst of the storm. And do you know that your father is not saying, Ah, son, go lah, go lah. Give you a good kick on the behind. And then go, go, you all go, in, go on your race. He is training us, He's following us, you know, like our trainer. The word says, disciplines you as son. The word discipline there is to train. Our father is bigger than all of the problems that are in the world. He's bigger than any of these issues that are facing people. When you don't have the answer, never mind, you're not the saviour of the world. Why do you need the answer about why these things are happening, right? Huh? As if God owes you an explanation. He's not accountable to us. But He is God. He knows what He's doing. All we need to do is just to follow Him only and look to Jesus. Alright? So Paul says, come on, man. Stand up straight. Strengthen the feeble knees. Quit whining. Oh, yo, all these bad things happening. Oh. Oh, yo, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's contagious, you know. In, in human beings, uh, on Facebook, this guy, them, them, liam, 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 you know, complaining, complaining, complaining. It's contagious. Complain about the government, complain about transport system, complain about traffic jam, complain about weather, complain about air. We can complain about everything. And God is saying, buck up. Quit whining. So all those who are here, even for myself, God is saying, come on. Do you know who is in you or not? Do you know who you are or not? If you know who you are, whining and complaining is not part of your personality. It is the life of, the, the inextinguishable life of God that is living inside you right now. So quit whining, keep calm and carry on. <laughs> okay, only the, if some people know what I mean. God is saying, carry on, come on. You know, people defeated already, all deflated there. God is saying, get up, continue. These things happen, but I'm here with you. Keep on keeping on. As somebody used to say or likes to say, we are in a new covenant now. There will be a shaking out of temporal things. There will be. God already said this how many thousand years ago. He already told us already in the Bible. I mean, I'm pointing to my Bible, okay? <laughs> so we already know it's not something unexpected. But what is the difference for us? The difference is we have an unshakable life. And you need to get that context right before you even talk about serving God. Alright? So, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, this kingdom cannot be shaken. And we are citizens of this kingdom. The, the word kingdom here is basilia or dominion. This, this kingdom is, there is the dominion of a king over this kingdom. All right? And this kingdom is in us. It is the life of God that has been birthed in you the moment you accepted Jesus as your Savior. It is there. Okay? So we are unable to properly serve God if we have not settled in our mind that our lives consist in the unshakable. True story. I repeat, we are unable to properly serve God if we have not settled in our mind 
that our lives, we are existing. The spirit man that is us is unshakable. Now, I don't know whether you notice this, but shaking is a catalyst for charity or service. Now, on Facebook, I have a friend who is a very philosophical guy. Okay? He's studying theology in uh, London, Ireland or London or something. Very philosophical guy. Lah. I mean, good friend of ours. And he put up a post, you know. He said, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here writing a thesis about Christianity and don't know something about God and don't know what. Comfortable in my room and then thousands of people are dying outside. I'm here thinking about what job am I going to take? How am I going to, you know, uh, earn a living? And then outside, children are dying. I'm here, you know, thinking about career advancement, about who I'm going to marry or something, you know. And then outside, people are starving. So, a shaking uh, is shakes people in their mind, the world as well, to thinking about taking stock about our own lives. You all agree or not? When a shaking happens uh, and somebody close to you dies or something bad happens, suddenly you think, oh, yo, I'm chasing about, you know, for this sale or this promotion. It doesn't make meaning. You know, it's not. It's not as meaningful anymore because it's so selfish. It is so self-serving. Suddenly people feel, I'm chasing all these things. I want to be a millionaire. I want to do all this and it's all for myself. And then there are so many people who don't even have a fraction of what I have. So shaking is a catalyst for people to want to care for others in the world. Everyone generally, those who are thinking about it. You all get what I'm saying? Huh? That is, shaking is a catalyst of that. It causes people to want to take stock of their lives. And actually, that's the beginning of something. And that's why Paul says, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. He's talking about shaking first, right? Then he talks about serving God. All right? But for us, it's different. People want to serve or want to serve others when there's a shaking of the things in their life. For us, our motivation for serving God is because we have something unshakable. You see the difference or not? Uh, blur, okay. <laughs> if, if you're living a good, comfortable life in the world, uh, happy, got enough money, my children love me, I love my children, my wife love me, I love my wife, you know, uh, I got a nice car, I got you know nice house. People are not thinking about the starving kids in Ethiopia, right? Right not? Will you be thinking about those who are dying outside? You won't, right? You'll be happy where you are. Lah. But suddenly something bad happens. Then suddenly all this news becomes relevant to you, you start being more concerned. Oh, maybe That's why there are some people, millionaires or whatever, when there's a, when there's a tragedy in their life, they take stock and then they give the, all their wealth away. Right not? That's the way of the world. It's like that. But what Paul is saying, for us, when we know that we are secure and we are unshakable, then only we can serve God. Because how can you serve a God that you don't trust? How can you serve a God that you, know, you think is the one that's responsible for the shaking in your life? You understand what I'm saying? So we, we, our service is born from a different motivation. So, my next question as I was looking at this verse is, Lord, what do you mean? What, what does serving God mean? What do you think it means? Playing the guitar here, jeng, 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 worship leading, huh? Being a, being a, a usher. It is not limited to church-related duties only. It is not saying, oh, I must give up everything and then go to uh, Timbuktu and, and, and bring people to Jesus. You know? Is it only about these things? That's the question. The word serve here is the word latrio in Greek, which means to minister to, to give service to, or to worship even. Alright, that is the Greek word for serve. Then the next question. Does God even need your service? Ah? Why he's so helpless he cannot help himself? Ah? Huh? 
Why must God need you to go and feed the poor? Why can't He feed the poor? He's all powerful, what? Right? So sometimes, uh, in our fervor and zeal for God, we miss the point completely. We think we must do lots of stuff for Him. I remember my grandfather one time. You know, this is the, in the very traditional background. I mean, he loves the Lord. You know, very, very traditional background. Chinese, you know, uh, uh, denomination. Or very, very traditional. They get a medal uh, for serving God from men. So man gives him a medal for serving God. I was wondering what's going on. God should give him the medal, lah, not man, right? So the, the church or the, the mindset of man is very, oh yeah, service, you must serve. If you don't serve, it's bad. But my question now is, do you, does God really need your service? And actually, what's this service all about? Before we look at that, we have to look at the character of the master. Let's say lah, you have a master that is uh, uh, ruthless man. Anything he doesn't like, uh, he sees somebody he don't like, he kill. Like, you know, maybe the most violent drug lord or something like that. All right? And if he's your master and you serve him by giving humanitarian aid to people who need it, people who didn't distribute the drugs properly, you say, sayang, sayang, it's okay, I understand. People who owe you money, now my, I forgive you. Is that service to your master? Is it service to your master? No, right? Because your master is a ruthless man. So if he's ruthless, what will he appreciate? The most. Hello? He will appreciate ruthlessness. Correct? So when you are ruthless, you are like your master, therefore it is an act of service to him. Think about it. Am I talking nonsense? <laughs> it's true. Whatever your master appreciates, that you must do in order for it to be meaningful service to Him. So who is God? What is God's character? We need to look at that first before we talk about service. Okay? 1 John 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. God is is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Our master is not a ruthless person. Our master is not a cruel master. Our master is not a calculative master. Our master is love the very embodiment of love. Actually, all the characteristics that we know of love come from Him. He describes love, actually. Not so much love describes Him. Because He Himself is love. That is His core character. That's who He is. Alright? So acts of love towards others are acts of service to our Master. He appreciates it the most when you love a fellow brother, a fellow sister, a fellow human being. Because you are representing or you are showing forth His character. Amen? And in a body of believers like this, do you think you have a lot of opportunity to show love? Yes. And this is God's training for us as well. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Different verse, this one. Beloved, let us love one another. 
For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. You know, 1 John is an amazing book. You know, when you read, and you read even John as well. John is so, John calls himself the disciple that Jesus loved. It's not so much Jesus said explicitly to him, therefore that's a title he carries, but he was, he was given the revelation of God's love for him. Therefore, he knew how much Jesus loved him. That's why he put the disciple that Jesus loved. Actually, Jesus loved all the disciples, but the rest of them maybe didn't get the revelation of that. And so, we need to be established in the unshakable life that is in us. We need to know the character of this master of ours in order to serve him. And serving him, the thing that brings most joy to him is acts of love to one another. Jesus said, this commandment I give to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so, we know that God is love and acts of service are acts of love to one another. So the next question is, why la, you put this for God is a consuming fire there? Make life very hard for preachers like me, you know? <laughs> so I was, I was sitting there scratching my head. I say, God, what? Why, why did you put... God is a consuming fire. So I go and search the Greek uh, lexicon, you know? Consuming fire. Consuming fire means... Consuming fire lah! What's the other way to explain it, right? A fire that consumes. A fire that burns. So I said, Holy Spirit, please show me lah. So I just did a check. This word consuming fire is mentioned nine times in the Old Testament, but only one time in the New Testament. In Hebrews 12 verse 29, lah. Uh, only mentioned once. So I just think, think, think. But it still seems like if we don't, you know, you must serve God acceptably. Okay, you love. If you don't love, then you get burned. No, no. How can it be, you know? It's not. Then, then I realize that we are in Christ and He is in us. In the Old Testament, people are always outside of the fire. That means, if you go near the fire, you get burned. The fire consumes you. But now, the person of this fire is living inside you. So that's different, right? What does that mean? That means you are a consuming fire. We are a consuming fire. Does that, is, is that what it means? So I was just thinking through it and, and you see, fire, what does fire do? Fire shows the quality of work, right? 1 Corinthians 3.13, Each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. You're following me so far? Huh? So, the purpose of fire is to test the quality of each man's work. And so I realized that the reason why this word is there, for God is a consuming fire, is that He will burn up everything that is shakable. So if the source of your service is from the flesh, it will become ashes. It will not last. So even in church, in TNCC, when we have community groups, when we have, you know, opportunities for people to show love, do not do it out of your flesh. Do not serve God and, you know, run yourself ragged from the effort of the flesh. You understand what I'm saying? Service to God comes from an act of love and the act of love is natural 
to someone who is love, right not? And that person who is love is living in you right now. And so the capability and the ability to love each other comes from God. And He has given it to all of us. It's just a matter of whether we want to allow Him to exercise it. You get it? So the purpose of this consuming fire is to show whether acts of love are from the Spirit which will last or is it from your own efforts which will not last? You see, if the world, through the shaking, suddenly starts up new humanitarian efforts, you start up this, you start up that, you know, how long do you think it will last? They go, do, 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 and you're so tired. Jesus said, you know, when, when uh, uh, Judas is scared, say, oh, this money could be given to the poor when, when I mean, this, this ointment can be sold when Mary uh, anointed Jesus, right? This ointment could be sold and given to the poor. Jesus said, the poor will be with you always. You will always have that. And so you serve, ah, be teng eh, you know, be lea one, you know, you on and on and on, you know. So if you're coming from your own strength and thinking that you're serving God, I tell you, brother, you're going to be flat. And then you're going to say, why God, why? Then blame God again. Then God then, you read lah, Hebrews 12, 28. <laughs> ah, bro, read lah, Hebrews 12, 28. <laughs> so aren't you glad, you know, that the source of, of even the service to God is Himself living in us, enabling us, empowering us to do all things. And so, it doesn't matter whether you're an usher, it doesn't matter whether you're on the worship team, it doesn't matter whether you're washing the dishes at the back, you are doing it out of love. You're serving the body of Christ. And you're doing it because you want to, not because you have to. Amen? So, what is amazing is, as I was thinking about this love, 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 you're going to look at your Bibles, huh? I feel that translation has limited the, the Bible. And so, especially like New King James and NIV, they got a lot of subheadings there, you know. When you read, then they compartmentalize a particular passage into one part, then the next passage is a separate. But actually, Paul, original Greek text was not written like that. It was written as one whole thing, one. Okay? So when you read, so I, I, I went to go and turn the next page to see what does, after Hebrews 29, for our God is a consuming fire, that's the last verse in Hebrews 12. But does that mean Paul actually wanted to stop there? I don't think so. I think that it, was, it goes on to the next verse. Paul was actually continuing, but somebody went to go and draw the line there. Okay? So the very thing that I'm talking about, about love, is mentioned. Hebrews 13, verse 1. And so I believe that this whole thing should be read together. Let brotherly love continue. So Paul is giving us a glimpse to what kind of service is acceptable to God, which is what I mentioned just now. Because our master is love. Therefore, God appreciates acts of love. And so Paul writes here, let brotherly love continue. Let it flow. Let it flow. All right? Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. So, you know, as I was thinking about this particular verse, do not forget to entertain strangers. What does this mean? Some people say, oh, it's hospitality, la. you know, you must do hospitality. La. I, I'm not so sure. I feel that this is more speaking about things that are beyond our understanding, how to say, impromptu, things which are unexpected, we didn't plan, things which are, you know, there are amazing things that can happen in what is seemingly seen to be, you know, yeah, I just opened a, my house, a room for this guy coming, law, then he stay there. Law, huh? But can you imagine, would that be a story worth writing if this person that came to stay in your room is an angel? 
don't you think it'll be an interesting experience? I think it'll be very interesting. And so what I'm saying is that when we avail ourselves to let the Spirit lead us in our acts of love to one another, there will be amazing things happening that you did not bargain for. Because you are putting yourself in the line of His Majesty's service. And you know, our God uh, has a knack of, of giving you interesting, unexpected stuff. Experiences. Out of this world experiences. It's just Him because He's out of this world. You see? And so, saying, avail yourself to the Spirit. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. During that time where Paul was writing, there were many Christians who were jailed, who were prisoners, and Paul himself uh, was also a prisoner. Okay, here I'm assuming that Paul is the writer of Hebrews, which I think he is. Uh, right? So he's saying that, you know, when one part of the body hurts, the whole part hurts. When your brother is in suffering or your brother is in, in a bondage, you will feel it because you're his brother. So in any way that we can, Ask the Holy Spirit, Father, who do you want me to help? Who do you want me to give to? You know, you see, we, 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 can, we can bless each other in so many ways. In our church, we don't believe in, in tithes anymore. I mean, we feel that, we, I, I personally believe that it is part of the, the old covenant. So, we don't have to, oh, 10%, oh, give to God, you know, every time I calculate, calculate everything. Is it before tax or after tax, 10%, you know? I mean, we get very calculative. When God says, give to this person, you give. When there's no prompting to give, don't give. But when you avail yourself to the Lord, it will flow in your life. It will flow. What comes in, what goes out, Okay, I, I shouldn't say what comes in. Uh. I mean, when Jesus comes in, we have everything. But for us, when we give, the more we give, the more God will give you. You let it flow. You, let, you become a conduit of His love through giving. So I'm giving this example, example of giving. All right? Example of time. Example, you know, sometimes we help somebody, it takes up our time. And we think, oh, yo, I do this and then I don't have time for something else. You know, let's say you're doing a, a project and you have to do a proposal for the project and then the proposal is a very lengthy one and then suddenly a brother needs help call you and then you say, yo, I'm busy, la, I cannot help you. Okay? And you go and slog away at the proposal. How do you know, how do you know that if you take out time and help him and then maybe you didn't manage to finish your proposal as nicely as you thought, how do you know the person will not give it to you, the, the contract? How do you know? You don't know, right? Because when God's favour is on you, you write a lousy proposal so you will get the contract. Lah. Right or not? Because it's not because how good you write. Ma. It's because of the favour of God that is on your life. And so if we trust our livelihood and our income and our careers and our lives to Him, when you know that you are unshakable, then you will have time and you will have money and you will have space for others. You get it or not? It's because people are so afraid. We feel that if we give to others, we will not have enough. If I love someone, I will not have enough love for my own loved ones, for example. Then that's why people are afraid to give, afraid to love one another. But our God's supply is endless. He gave his all, he gave Jesus. Everything that he had was Jesus. He gave Jesus to us. And God is a very good investor. He will not make losses or low ROI one. Uh, his return on investment very high. He gave his all, he get back everything and more. And so if he is your father, the same thing will happen in your life. So when we know this, and see, we need to know this, you see. When we know this, then only we are able to give to others. We are able to love others in a way that is free. 
Not, yo, I give only up to here or what, you know? I mean, you just decide in your heart what you want to give and you just give and be happy. I remember I, I, had, a, I, I had a brother that I don't really know. I mean, I know him last time, long time ago. And uh, he's going through a bad patch. He was going through a bad patch in his life. And then he posted something, you know, like very depressing. And then the Holy Spirit moved me in my heart to give him a sum of money. Okay? I mean, it would probably be amounting to his salary or more. Lah, okay, I think. Lah. Just that figure, I said, oh, so much. Ah. Can, ah. you know. So then what I did was, I went to go and, but I want him to come into life, you see. So I went to go and get a, a dongle of uh, Joseph Prince sermons, grace sermons. So I give the, I, so I called him up, I say, uh, can we meet? So we just met and then I just passed him the cash together with the USB thumb drive. Okay? You know, human beings are very hard to give without strings attached one. Even for me, okay, I, I, let me, I, I, sorry, I, I, I admit, I admit. <laughs> so I give him, the Holy Spirit said give without strings attached. Lah. I just give the thumb drive also for him, right, to listen. So in my mind, ah, hey, if I receive something like that ah, and the guy give me a thumb drive, there must be something important on that thumb drive. Lah. So I go and listen. Lah. So I told him, go and listen, you know, it's free, you know, up to you, da, 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 everything. Then he never listened. He take the money only. So initially, I was a little bit upset. I said, yeah, why? I'm trying to help you, you know, in my mind. Then the Holy Spirit give me a whack at the back of the head. Like, Bish. What's wrong with you? I said, give without strings attached. Why well, you still got so many strings attached? <laughs> then he also very pious. Oh, yo, I only listened halfway the first one. I'm very busy. I'll try. I'll try this weekend. I'll listen, you know. After all, I said, I wrote to him. I said, never mind, don't worry. <laughs> Just relax. No obligation one. So, so we are all learning, you see. And can you imagine how powerful it is in the body of Christ when those who have a lot are free to give to those who do not have? And those who do not have give of their time and of their other things, talents to the body of Christ when the whole thing is flowing. Can you imagine how powerful that is? It is powerful. It goes against the very grain of capitalism. It goes against the system of this world. The system of this world is those who have more will get even more. God's system is not like that. He gave everything to all of us. All of us, the life in us is the wealth unimaginable. Do you know that the Bible says that you have treasures unimaginable hidden in jars of clay? All of us look normal, right? Huh? You're sitting on a chair. It's not like you're flying in mid-air, right? Huh? Everybody needs a chair to support your weight. Lah. If the chair got three legs, you will fall over. Lah. Huh? We look normal people, like normal people. But do you know that that life inside you is abnormal? It is supernatural. And so when you see this shaking that is happening in this world, let it remind you, the next time you see another piece of bad news that shake again, then you say, I have an unshakable foundation, which is Jesus Christ. And from this unshakable foundation, I can love my brother and my sister through the flow that comes in me. So if you don't, you know, every day you, you ask the Holy Spirit, say, Father, is there anything that you want me to do for my brother or sister? Anything. Loving one another is the highest form of service to each other and to God. Why? How do I know this? Because Jesus, my master, set the example. This verse is repeated almost verbatim. That means it is written like this almost verbatim twice. Okay? It's repeated once, huh? not repeated twice. Okay? It's repeated once okay? in two different books, Matthew and Mark. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served. So God's idea it's not to sit there, okay, do pedicure or manicure for me. Huh? God is not sitting on His throne huh, expecting to get a holy manicure from you, okay? That's not our Father. His example is to show that love that is inside of us to flow out to others. And He did it first. He did it first for us. He did, Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve. How? did he serve? He served with love, right? 
He served love to all of us. And that is the example of service that matters to God, that brings joy to His heart because we are acting like Him. We are reflecting His character. That is who He is. And Jesus gave His life a ransom for many. Isn't He great? Jesus is just wonderful. And so I'm not saying, you know, do it on your... Again, I'm saying don't do it in your strength, okay? I'm saying don't do it in your strength. With all these things that I've been sharing with you, in your head, you meditate on it. You know, take down the verses. You know, go and look through it again yourself. Let it speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. He leads all of us. We are all led of the Spirit. If you are a son of God, you are led of the Spirit. If you are led of the Spirit, you are a son of God. That's what the Bible says multiple times. Okay? Listen to the Spirit. Allow Him to love others through us because He loves all men. And do you know in times of shaking, the, uh, the difference becomes more apparent when the children of God love compared to the love of the world in times of shaking. Because in times of shaking, everybody all shaking, lah, okay? But when the, when the children of God stand up, strengthen your feeble knees, and you serve others out of genuine love, people will be able to see it immediately. They know that there is a different spirit in you. And that, that, my friends, is evangelism. Because the moment they are touched by the love of God, their hearts are changed. No need to convince them, hey, you must believe in Jesus, la, must, la, must, la, no. no. The moment they are touched, they say, I want that. I want that. The thing that you have in you, I want it. They'll be running in. In Romans 5.5, 5, it says, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been, it's the word poured out or shed, shed abroad, huh? the, the word poured out is gushing, you know, the word gushing, not trickling, huh? not dripping, huh? it's gushing, poured out, in that kind of manner. And that is the love that God has poured into us for others. If only we listen to Him and allow Him to love others through us. Okay? So as, in closing, I like to say, let us serve God in grace. We need to know that His life in us is unshakable. God is love. We serve Him by letting His love flow through us to others. And that is service which is acceptable to God. Amen? Amen. Let's rise. May the worship team Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for this word that you have spoken to all of us here today. Father, in the midst of this shaking, you are unshakable. Jesus is the solid rock on which we stand. And this life that is inside us is a life that is unshakable. And Father, we thank you that from this platform, or from this understanding in our minds, we will not be feeble, we will not be weak, we will not be tossed about by the waves to and fro, but we will know who we are in Christ. And from there, Lord, we let, we let you continue to let us serve you by acts of love toward one another and reflecting your character. I thank you for my brothers and sisters here all across the room, everyone who is here. Father, I pray that this word will be clear in their minds. And Father, that your spirit will quicken, that this, as this word goes in, Father, that you will reap a harvest 60 fold, 90 fold, 100 fold, 30, 60, 100 fold in our lives. And that we will find ourselves living in the freedom of Christ, loving one another, giving to one another, 
something that the world can never understand. And it is not from our own efforts, it is the Holy Spirit strengthening, empowering, prompting, suggesting to us how to do it. Now, thank you, Lord, for those who are here who have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Those of you here who have not accepted Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that I heard this message today. And I want this unshakable foundation in this shaking world. I want Jesus. And I accept Him into my life. He is my Lord and my Saviour. And the Holy Spirit will come into me. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. And I want to experience, and I will experience, this wonderful life that is flowing in me now. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.